do that here in a second. Let me see if my screen gets shared. I started the recording, but it uh, I see we start we can see your screen. Uh, go ahead and share my screen. All righty. There we go. We should be. Should be good to go now. I'm hoping. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Glenn Goldberg. I am from Sense Corp here in St. Louis, Missouri. For those of you that are from out of town, um, I run our internal IT. They call me director of collaboration, but that really just means I am the practice what we preach person. Um, welcome to my presentation today as part of the Microsoft 365 Developer Bootcamp. Hopefully, everybody's having a a good day today. Um, we shall, uh, we'll see if it continues here, right? So um, by all means, if you have questions as I present today, um, make sure you um, and our moderator will, will, will call you out on that or um, just shout out. There's, it's a small enough group here that feel free to ask your questions as we go along. Uh, we're all family in this, in this, uh, in this virtual world we're in, so by all means. Anyway, today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be talking about a, uh, a case study walkthrough. Uh, this is about a solution that was recently built in our organization um, using the Power Platform in its entirety, uh, rapidly built, but it really came out of the need to provide a solution for creating a, a contest, a, a photo submission contest, and uh, making available to all their employees to be able to upload photos during the Halloween time and uh, be able to vote on them and all, all those neat things. And um, I'm appreciative that uh, you all wanted to uh, go through it, see how we built it, uh, talk about some of the pros and cons of the environment and where we would have taken it next. But um, let me talk a little bit about kind of the scope of it, and then I'll take you in and show it all to you live um, because it's actually an ongoing uh, contest as we speak. So uh, in the next 40 minutes or so, uh, we're going to talk about the, this, this particular project. We're going to talk about the goals of what we set out to accomplish, what were some of the main requirements. I think you'll find that they're pretty generic to most of your organizations. We'll talk about our solution architecture, and then I'm going to take you in for a nice live demo of the environment and take you into the code and things like that. So uh, real briefly here, let me explain a little bit about what we were trying to accomplish and, and how we did so. So um, our goal was to create a photo contest submission solution um, and provide ability for people to rate those submissions. So um, if you can imagine your own organization, you know, maybe it's a uh, photo uploader, if you will, that's available to the masses and then people can say, hey, I like it or not, right? Very socially um, modern type of environment. We did have some requirements and constraints though. Uh, one, it had to be easily accessible from both desktop and mobile devices. They really wanted to be platform agnostic. Um, they wanted the ability to rate all of the submissions. So in this case, in our case, it was a Halloween photo contest. Um, they were able to submit photos of themselves or their family in cool costumes as we tried to build more of a culture in this in this pandemic time. Um, we had uh, the ability for people to record videos where they could submit scary Halloween laughs, things like that. So it was a lot of fun building part of uh, the uh, fun side of any organization and engaging people is something we're all looking to do. And this is just an easy way to do it. Um, in addition to submitting things easily enough, and whether you're on a cell phone or on your laptop, um, we more importantly had to provide the ability for people to rate those solutions. And that's kind of a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, so you had to make sure that people could vote on any submission, but you also had to make sure that they could change their votes as uh, more submissions were made because it was kind of a rolling submission period. Then we had to make sure people couldn't have more than one vote at any one time for any one submission. So we had a few constraints there. Um, we had to categorize 
everything. Uh, we had to also make it available for a certain time period for uploading your photos and submitting stuff to your organization, um, as well as opening up the voting for a period of time as well. And of course, like most organizations, we had to leverage our licensed platforms as much as possible. And our, our hardcore application development team wouldn't be available in the time frame we had. And by the way, our time frame was 48 hours from request to test of deployment. So it was a very rapid turnaround type of environment here. And so we had to come up with a way of getting this done quickly and yet doing it in a way that was reliable and trustworthy and and fun, to be honest, for people. So let me talk a little bit about how we designed the system. And then we'll go in and I'll do a full demo walkthrough of all the code. First of all, any questions so far from anyone? OK, good. Um, so the environment itself, in our world, we're an Office 365 company. We have E3 licenses for those that that means something. But having that Microsoft platform, uh, we looked at the tools we had available. And originally, we were going to do something that was going to be this nice little power, uh, power app solution, because uh, that provided the ability to upload the, the images and things we needed. Uh, we needed a data repository that was going to be built on SharePoint. Um, and eventually, though, we kind of changed the solution architecture a little bit to leverage some of the most recent things from uh, Microsoft and the 365 platform. And one of those big paradigm shifts was we leveraged the Microsoft Forms platform instead of Power Apps. And here's why. Uh, Forms in just the past couple months, we'll say maybe even less than that, added new capability that had been in their roadmap for a long time that allowed you to do uploading into a form of attachments. Believe it or not, uh, that with with um, having that as a required field was not a capability of that platform initially. You had to go to Power Apps anytime you wanted to create an upload or of any sort. Um, we really like this because one, Microsoft, Microsoft Forms in and of themselves are very responsive in nature. So they they will resize to a cell phone and make it nice and readable just as easy as they would on a high res uh, laptop or desktop machine. Um, so we chose the Microsoft Forms platform for the form to actually make your submissions. Uh, we also then uh, chose the SharePoint platform for our data repository we toyed around with the idea of building out a whole database in SQL Server with uh, the, the, the documents and metadata and then a separate table for the voting, tracking, things like that. But the problem with that was it required premium licensing to in order to be able to um, push and pull the data from SQL Server. And if you're not a large enterprise company, you probably don't have that licensing easily accessible. So we chose SharePoint for the scope of what we needed figuring we'd have about 50 submissions. It wasn't a big deal. If it's something where you are going to have 200,000 submissions, maybe it's a photo uploader for a user profile solution or something else, uh, your mileage might vary. You might want to consider, do you need a more robust content management platform than just SharePoint itself? But it worked perfect for us. Um, we also were able to, using those platforms, leverage things like the news story generators and things like that for announcing our contest and building enthusiasm and participation. Um, and we were also able to come up with a rating solution that allowed it, us to meet our requirements. It wasn't the most elegant thing, as you'll see, but it allowed us to meet our requirements quite effectively. Um, and then behind the scenes, another really cool feature you see is we leverage Power Automate. You might know it as the Flow platform. Um, and what this allowed us to do is take those submissions that people submit into forms. Um, we didn't want to have to have any manual intervention by our staff. So we wanted to be able to move those into our data repository. And so we use Power Automate to simply move that data around. So that was our high level solution architecture. Nothing hopefully um, uh, that you wouldn't expect in a Power Platform solution. Um, and the nice thing was, is we didn't have to even pull in our Power Apps uh, experts for this particular solution. So let me go ahead and I am going to take you in to the actual solution itself. 
And like I said, this is actually a um, um, a live solution within our organization. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pull it up here uh, and kind of take you through it from the end user perspective first, and then we'll go we'll go into the uh, the code a little bit. Let me go ahead and start with the um, um, the form that actually started the process off announcing the contest and where people went. Here we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So quite simply, from a user perspective, we post. We decided to create a news story in our SharePoint environment, um, publish it out there for all the organization to see. And if you haven't used the site news story content type in SharePoint, the nice thing about those is you can roll them up in a lot of different ways. A lot of the Microsoft 365 platform natively understands a site news story that's published and handles those a little bit differently than a typical page on a department site. Um, we roll them up to our home page. We have the SharePoint app that they get published to. When you publish a news story, we use an, we use a uh, action card similar to what I believe Bill showed earlier today. Um, using flow where it actually will pull into our team's environment. We also have a custom mobile app that it sucks those news stories into as well. Um, so the user gets multiple notifications whenever we have a news story, but you only have to publish it in one place. Um, in this place, uh, it's just one of our uh, one of our uh, main sites, our corporate sites. It announced the cost the costume contest and. Um, Within it, we had a link simply to be able to go to a form and upload your um, your submission. Uh, nothing that our administrative team or front desk help couldn't help put this together, and they did. So all the people had to do was to click on the link to the form itself, and they were taken to an upload location. Um, I will mention this at one point. The forms platform, when you create a submission form, does allow you to embed it in a SharePoint page. But ironically, um, when you're dealing with uploading of files, it was better to have it be full page in its own. If you're pulling up on a cell phone, it, it just laid itself out funny on the page if you try to embed it within the SharePoint page itself. Um, if it was just a regular submission form, that'd be different. But with as you'll see with the photos, we wanted to have the full screen experience in that responsive design um, of using the form. So people are able to come in, they click on the link, and sure enough, simple enough form. Wait, wait, wait. Question? Okay. Um, you click on the link and you got the form. We also were able to send out the, the link directly to this form for those that weren't on our internal site. Maybe they were at a client site and they didn't have access to our internet so they could get directly out here. One of the nice things about the forms environment is of course it's it's availability and outside the organization and the fact that it is very mobile ready. It'll render nicely on full screen. It'll shrink down if you're on a little cell phone um it's completely responsive i could have whoops sorry i could have created this entire form in power apps and that would have been perfectly acceptable as well however power apps if you want it to be responsive today you have to code in all of that responsiveness and so um, um i didn't really have the time to go in and want to have to debug all that and honestly the only other reason I would have considered Power Apps is until recently, our, our question here on uploading an actual video or a photo was not allowable in forms, but now it is. So I really wanted to test out this new feature. So quite simply, it's a form with required fields. Um, if, you, if you wanted to actually create the form, um, I don't know how familiar you are with forms or not. They have a nice little allows you to go in and, and you can define the type of field you want. Um, the new field, the upload a photo or video field is out there. Um, it's actually um, it's actually listed in the ellipses as file upload. So you can actually add multiple 
uh, questions out there if you wanted in order to be able to upload multiple items if you want to. But it also had the perfect amount of configuration for us because we only wanted people to upload um, videos, images, and audio, and those were all supported. So we're able to come in and say, don't allow PDF or documents because that made no sense in our contest. Um, we also could limit the number of files and um, we could even put down a file size limit. Last thing I wanted is for you know someone to come in with a two gig file of them laughing and a nice Halloween laugh. So it allowed us to put some constraints on it, uh, which is exactly what we needed. I could have coded those constraints into Power Apps, that is true. But again, limited resources, limited time, and this met our requirements. And the fact that it went above and beyond what we originally planned. Um, so that was the big one. Uh, the other ones are just basic survey fields, enter a caption, enter a type. Nothing, nothing really exciting there. If you're not familiar with forms, when you actually submit a form, what happens is it gets buried within the back end of that form into a response area that's not accessible to the users at all. So in this case, our contest had 41 submissions. And um, yes, we could have had our administrator come in here and looked at every single submission, pulled them out and moved them somewhere where they could have all voted and done all this manual work, but we didn't want to do any of that. So um, instead, we used our uh, workflow engine to automate that whole process of getting it somewhere accessible to everybody. Let me go back for a second here to the actual form. And so in this case, I could have submitted a form, said best costume. One of the cool things about this new control in forms is also that it is device ready, meaning if you're on a desktop machine, a Windows or a Mac, and you access it, it's going to pull up your file explorer. A typical open and select dialog window where you could have picked whatever your your image was and it'll go ahead and load it into the form uh, for you. However, um, if I had done that exact same thing, I wish I had the screenshot in front of me from a, my cell phone, you get an entirely different experience. You get the native cell phone experience where it says, do you want to take the picture or video? Or do you want to pick one from your photo repository on your cell phone? So this was great because our users could easily hold up a cell phone to their face, you know, do a self-recording, and then upload it right from there into the form itself. Other than that, the experience was identical. Um, you know, the only difference being, of course, as you shrink down, their form might have been laid out a little different because, as I mentioned, it was nice and responsive in nature. See how the form just shrunk down in the middle there? So this is what it would have looked like on the cell phone. The only difference being um, when you click upload, it would have given you the option to take your own picture. Pretty cool. So anyway, they fill it out. They hit submit. What happens next? I mentioned that we use the Power Automate platform to try and take care of all the manual stuff we would have done. And our focus on that is primarily around getting that submission that's buried in the form itself into its own kind of proprietary repository out somewhere where we could manipulate and where we could vote on them and so forth. So we had some code out here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. And I think I will also zoom in a little because that's really tiny, I just realized. Here, hopefully that's a little easier. And you can see this is a very complex, long workflow. Um, the platform natively under talks to forms. Uh, Power Automate natively has the ability now to shuffle files around if you just know the right actions to take. So in this particular case, we have an action trigger uh, for when a new response is submitted to our form, which was our photo contest. And then basically what happens is we go through, and in this case, it's in the apply for each loop, but we limited it to only one photo submission. Um, we probably could have even gotten more, um, gotten rid of this loop altogether. But the fact is, is um, initially we thought they could submit multiple times. So we left it in place. Um, what happens here in our workflow is only a couple things. We get the response that they submitted. 
through the forms and that response is going to give you the list of all of the the one or more responses you would have and then if you haven't used the compose field before it's one of the most useful things out there what this allows you to do is to take any field that is part of the scope of your workflow and convert it to something else um, here i'm using it to basically take the photo field uh, that's buried in the body of that particular form that was submitted and pull it out so i can reference it really easy um, and at first what i ended up with is a whole bunch of json a whole bunch of really ugly xml like code that i would have had to manually parse through but fortunately Power Automate also gives us this parse JSON command. And so the parse JSON command allowed me to take the output from my submission. And what I can do is define a schema for it. And I can come in here and say, oh, OK, this is what I'm going to get. I'm going to get an array of, of objects. I'm going to have the link. I'm going to have the status. I'm going to have all this information. And what it will do is pull them out one by one so you can access them. Now, the trick here is generating the schema. But fortunately, we have another thing here. We have this generate from sample, and this allows us to automatically generate that schema from output from a previous command. So how do I get that? Let me step out of the workflow for a second and go into an actual run, and I think this will become a little more obvious to you. So I just ran went in here to the same workflow, but um, I went into an actual runtime review of it. And I can see here when, you know, here's my response that was submitted. Really, it's just the name of the form. When I go in here, I only had one attachment, so it's only going to go through once. I can now get all the detail of it in the response details, but you'll notice here there's this body out here that's returned as part of that um, getting in my response details. So what I do is I come in here, I take the field for the photo, and then it will actually output for you the actual data you get back. And you can copy and paste this right back into the code so i can come in here take this code do a copy on it now let me go back to my flow and edit it if i go to my generates let me go ahead and pull it up here sometimes when you share video it goes a tad bit slow there we go now, back in my parse statement here where I needed the schema, it said generate from sample. I can come in here and I can actually paste that result that I got earlier, which was the name, the link, the ID, all those things that were out there. And when I hit done, it now generated that schema for me. So you don't have to know JSON and schema design to be able to generate these in Power Automate. That's a great feature. Um, now I have those fields. And what the value of this is, is now I can reference all of these individually. I couldn't do that till I parsed them from the result set. So now all I simply had to do was go in to the uh, particular res response. I had all the values here, like ID and so forth, available as values I could enter. Um, and then I'm able to go ahead and create the file that I want. Now, Here's a lesson learned. When I actually ran the um, when I actually ran the uh, the submission, what happens is forms automatically takes those image attachments and it doesn't actually store them with the metadata in the form submission. It stores them in the account that's used to run that form itself. So in this case, we had a service account. In our world, it was called SC Service, but it could have been G Goldberg. It could have been, you know, company ABC Service Account. That's the one I ran it under. And what it does is all those images actually get thrown into a folder in its OneDrive. 
which was great because now I had somewhere I could actually take that hidden file and actually pull it out and put it where people could vote on it. So this took a little bit, though, for me to realize where the files were being stored. Um, but it, you know, in this particular case, I was actually creating the flow as a service account. You could have changed ownership later in production to do the same thing. I think in an earlier session, we talked a little bit about service accounts. Um, anyway, so it turns out that in this person's OneDrive is where all those files got stored. Well, I didn't want them there. I needed them more accessible. So what I did was I got the file based on its ID. Then originally, Flow actually gives, or Power Automate gives you a move file option, but that kept failing on me. Not 100% sure why. I think it was more of a bug in the system. But what I found was I actually had to create the file new in the new location, which is this URL you see here, um, with the file name that came from a parse statement, as well as the file content that I just pulled out. And then I had to update the file properties afterward in order to be able to get the caption and things from the form itself. I tried to do it all in one step and it didn't work. So it required me to create the file, update the file's metadata, and then the last step was delete the original file that was in that person's OneDrive. So um, that was a little bit of a hack. Well, not really a hack. It's just the process and the way it worked. So what ends up happening is when somebody submits a form, the data's the metadata from questions one and three and an ID pointer to the photo or a URL are stored within the form en engine itself. But the file itself is actually stored out in OneDrive. So that that flow that I created simply takes the file from OneDrive. And let's see here, I believe it's under apps, Microsoft Forms. I didn't create that. Um, the system created all those folders for me automatically. And then in this particular case, all of the um, files that were out there would have been in here. So at one point there were 41 files in here. This one that you're seeing was just the temporary file that I uploaded and then deleted. It hasn't cleaned it up yet. And then this was a flow that failed earlier that uh, they resubmitted. So those two things aside, um, this is where they're stored as an interim state. You'll notice it's private. So no one in our organization could have found them here. I had to move them into another location. So let me show you that location a little bit. So, um, once it's said and done, let me come back here. We have an actual document library in our SharePoint environment. And this is the end result of that activity I did earlier. I basically um, took it, moved it in here, added the caption, added the submitter field, which were both pieces of metadata from that parsing. Um, let me go to the all documents view here. And the name itself that the system generated, which uh, is a lesson learned. I would actually rename it when you go into this field and into something more meaningful uh, than the one that the form that you used to submit did. But I like the fact it had the timestamp in it or it was unique. So I left that alone. No, none of our users see this field. So this is just the repository and you can see yeah, we had 40 plus submissions out there, which is pretty darn cool. Um, now, now that we went through the trouble of creating the form and made it easy for people to submit on a mobile device and we had a workflow to get it into this library, then came the last part of our requirements and that was making it something that was rateable. So um, originally, we were going to create a second library and track each individual person um, and do like a little mini database, if you will. Um, but what we ultimately ended up when we saw the requirements was, oh, they can vote one time and they have to be able to change it. They they um, they can um, adjust their votes as they go along. And so as we started reading the requirements, we realized that there is a native field called the rating field uh, within SharePoint. And so we decided to try and leverage that field. And it turns out it met every one of the requirements with the exception of one, but we let it slide. Um, 
If you haven't ever seen the rating field, it is native in in traditional SharePoint through SharePoint 2019 on-prem. Um, in modern sites, it is available as well, but you have to turn on a site, collect, a site feature uh, called publishing in order to be able to see it. But this site already had publishing on because this was one of our sites we moved from on-prem to the cloud years ago. So it was already there, so we didn't have to rewrite the wheel. Um, Anyway, all we ended up doing was we created different categories. So you can see best costume, best everything else. Um, and uh, we tried to make them as simple as possible because these were, were the fields that people were going to come in and rate on. However, we also realized that people don't really like going into a lot of different lists and we didn't want them to have to worry about changing their view because you know you got to treat end users as simplistic as possible from a ui perspective so what we did was we actually created a um we actually created a page that put each of those custom views on it and allowed us to to flip through them so let me go to to that page so eventually, we took away that news story that said, upload your photos, and we placed it with this photo right here, um, which said, click here to vote. People came in, and what we did was we created a SharePoint set of pages, three pages, each with a button on them that allowed you to simply go between categories. Um, because this is a web page itself, you don't have the clutter of you know changing views and having to worry about people trying to create new items the only reason you see these up here is because i'm the owner and i have permission so for them it's a very basic page and they could simply click on whichever category they want and they just go in and they would rate whatever they wanted and that's all there was to it so in the end this worked out for us. We had about, I'd say, you know, anywhere between 10 and 100 votes per item. It's still, this is actually a live contest. So there's still voting and stuff going on. Um, so people are still doing that. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about the solution where we left it was you could see as you go along, and it turned out they didn't care, you could see the average score in one to five stars as you're voting along. So I can kind of track who's leading and who's not. Now, a lot of them all look the same. They all look like four and a half stars. That was a little bit of an issue, um, but our summary page allows us to get all the very specific data on those votes, and then we can run that through our administrator at the end to get the true winner to the, to the decimal level. Um, hold on one second here. I um, am uh, being paged. Sorry about that. Um, let's see here. So um, what we had, if I go back into our library, our administrator has one view that all the regular users don't have access to, and they had a summary view. And so what happens here is in this view, they can get every single rating that was given and they can go in and do the final computation on what their score was to generate a winner. And this can all be exported right to Excel to make it really easy. Um, so we have all that raw data on who voted and how they voted if we wanted it. We don't really care about who voted. We care more about what their overall final score is. But that raw data is available because in the rating view, it, it kind of looked um, like they're all tied, even though they aren't really. Um, that was one of our lessons learned is ideally, had this not been a two day effort, it would have been nice to go into Power Apps and generate a new UI for this page where we could have tied the rating control of Power Apps in here and made a much more intuitive page laid out so it didn't look like a SharePoint list. I probably could have also done it with some of the custom page formatting where you can go in and uh, you can actually format your list and library um, view. And we pro I probably could have come in here and added some nice JSON in here that would have um, made that 
rating call out better or maybe even suppress the total number of votes per item if we wanted to. Those are things I just didn't have time for, but you can kind of see where it would go next. But in the end, it met all our needs. Everybody submitted their, their contest. We had zero requests for support during the contest itself, um, which happened over a weekend, Halloween weekend. So that was good. And um, it actually turned out to be a pretty good solution in the end for what our needs were. With that said, let me go back here. Um, you know, I do have the walkthrough of it all there, including the main steps in my presentation that's available afterwards. But let me open it up to uh, questions from you all to see what you all might have um, that you all like to ask about the solution or things we learned. Any questions? Hey, Glenn, this is Ajay. Yeah. So I have a question. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, right, your decision to go, you know, between power apps versus forms and kind of came down to responsive design and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, have you guys considered maybe for future to see if there's, you know, have this kind of thing just be published as an app, you know, on mobile devices? So uh, somebody, you know, they've got their SenseCorp, um, MDM on their phone, and now this is basically going to be an app, folks. Here, you know, here you go, kind of a thing. Has that sort of come up as a? You know, so yeah, I mean, it obviously put in yeah. a uh, full application and deployed as a standalone mobile app, but um, they want it available in the Mac environment. They want it available on desktops as well. Um, okay. So we want something that was a little more cross-platform. And honestly, um, we aren't using MDM in our organization. We're not big enough for that, really. I mean, we are, but it's um, the only way we could have really done that is if we use Power Apps, they would have had to have the Power Apps app installed on their machine. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with Forms, it was a zero install. Yeah. So it was right in the browser, and, and that was very appealing given the short-term nature of it. They didn't want something where people had to install a whole nother mobile app in order Fair. to be able to see it. If we were using Power Apps on our mobile devices everywhere, that yeah. would have been a different story. But in both cases, it's ultimately a URL. It's just how the app opens it or the browser opens it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, it could have been a custom solution. We originally, the original request was, well, just do it all as one SharePoint list. And people will submit a form in SharePoint, which could have easily been done. Um, and we could have used Power Apps to just customize the submission form. But as soon as they said they wanted it to be able to run on their mobile devices, and uh, you know, if you want to be able to upload a photo, things like that, uh, having it in a list would have started putting us down a path of having to recreate what forms luckily gave us natively. We were really pleasantly surprised by the upload capability in this 1.0 rollout of it. It worked well and it gave us the functionality we need. Now, I only wish they could do that with um, um, named users as, you know, because it doesn't validate user IDs in a field. You can't enter a, a you know, a validated user ID. You can only enter freeform text um, without going to Power Apps. Had they needed the user ID, like if you could submit on behalf of someone else, then we would have been forced into Power Apps because Power Apps would have uh, um, provided us the capability to enter a true people field versus forms that doesn't provide a people field yet. Yep, true, 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 true. Yeah, if that ever comes, then our excuses for Power Apps will drop by half probably. So maybe that's on purpose that they haven't provided that capability yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, other questions? Uh, let's see here. Really, that, that was the main part of the presentation. I am happy to take questions here on it. Um, so it's really, you know, up to you all as far as questions. I know we have another session coming up at three, but I am not going anywhere right now. So if you have a question, by all means. I can turn my video back on now that I'm not sharing my screen. <laughs> Any questions? 
Anybody see any uh, applicable use of this to their environment as a photo uploader? Hopefully, I like to see. By how about this? Raise a hands. Who knew that you could actually do uh, photo uploading now in forms? Because I sure didn't until a week ago. <laughs> I I did, but only because it was one of the solutions we were looking at for another client, and mm -hmm. then because they wanted um, the users to be anonymous, mm -hmm. they, you couldn't do it. Right. You can't if you can only do it within the organization. You can't upload photos or upload files outside of your organization. Really? And, yeah. yeah. So that's that. that's a limitation of forms. And so we had to nix that and come up with a different solution. But that was a it was we were going to use forms and 100 percent use forms. But then that kind of nixed that that ability to do that. But it was it was interesting. No, oh, very cool. No, I, I was not aware of that. So. Uh, we have several cases where we've built Power Apps in the past to allow us to upload forms, or we've customized SharePoint lists with Power Apps um, to allow us that form uploading capability. And some of those, actually, this is an easier solution, except mm -hmm. if you need people validation. That falls out of scope of forms. You have to stick with SharePoint or Power Apps or something custom if you want the people field, if you will. So hopefully that will eventually flow into the roadmap here and forms will be able to take off on steroids. But uh, until then, this was a nice addition. Yeah, you have very little, uh, you know, making sure the form is entered correctly, like, oh, enter an email. Uh, you know, there, there's good yeah. luck with that in forms. You have to actually check it on the back end with like a flow to make sure they entered it right. And maybe send them an email. Hey, you screwed up. Do it. Try this again. Yeah. So. But the one thing it does provide in the metadata, however, is it does provide the submitter information. So you can get yep. the email. So if you're submitting, let's say, a review form for yourself or a submission in this particular case, or maybe and now we're going to look at be using it for user profile updates instead of that old native SharePoint form that will propagate to different systems. As long as it's something that you're not submitting on behalf of someone else, you can actually make that work pretty well by using the submitter field because that is your last, you know, that's your created by user. So it is available, at least that's available to you for some use cases, which is pretty cool. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Becky, I think I saw that you were on here. Um, when is our next session? Is that at three o'clock, the Ask the Experts? Is that correct? Yes. So in 15 more minutes, everybody jump in the general channel and we'll do an Ask the Experts. And this really is just a time to um, just say, hey, what am I struggling with at work? What do I want some ideas at, some feedback? And please join us that. That's from 3 to 3.30. And then starting from um, at 3.30, then we have a couple, uh, two more sessions, um, one in the Power Apps, uh, Power Platform Track, and one in the M365. Um, and that those will be our last um, formal sessions for the day. So thank you guys all for taking part. Very 